Zipporah and Aaron. In our last story, we learned about how Moses encountered God through a flame emanating from a bush. The voice of God spoke to Moses in a wonderfully beautiful way. God called him to lead his people out of Egypt, for he had heard their cries. Moses also asked God for his name, and God said, I am who I am. In this story, we will learn how Moses was protected by Zipporah and how Moses' brother Aaron is called by God to meet and lead with his brother, as inspired by the book of Exodus. Hello, I'm Jack Graham with today's episode of the Bible in a Year podcast. In our previous episode, we learned that the exile of Moses was interrupted after 40 years by God speaking through a burning bush. God's presence appeared and told him that he was needed, called to go back to Egypt and to deliver the people. And despite Moses' many protests and excuses, God did not give up on him. He empowered and reassured the man that he, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the great I Am, would go with him. Today, we'll hear how Moses returns to Egypt and how God called his brother Aaron to join Moses and lead the people alongside of him. We will also hear how Moses' wife, Zipporah, will act swiftly to demonstrate obedience and commitment to God. This is a story about how God goes before His children and always fulfills His purpose for their lives. Let's listen now to the reading from Exodus. Moses had heard the call of God. Excited, scared, and anxious, he went to tell his family of what had taken place. He told them of his encounter with the burning bush, the signs God had given him, and his call to go set free the slaves of Egypt. He turned to his father-in-law Jethro and said, Please let me go back to my brothers in Egypt to see whether they still live. Jethro allowed him to leave in peace. God beckoned Moses to leave, for all those who once sought his life were dead. So Moses took his wife, sons, and staff, Moses ventured back to the land he once fled, and he battled fear within his heart, yet he knew God was with him. They journeyed through scorching heat and freezing nights. Dunes, hills, and wilderness surrounded them. When Moses was alone and his family resting at a short distance, God spoke to him once again. When you return to Egypt, see that you show Pharaoh every miracle I have given you, yet do not be dismayed if he rejects you. For I have hardened his heart. He will not let my people go. Moses listened intently, breathing deeply so that he could tune into and understand what God was telling him. He continued saying, Tell Pharaoh that Israel is my firstborn son, and if he refuses to allow my firstborn son to come home to me, he will lose his. For God had already seen the hideous crimes Egypt had performed against the Hebrew children. One evening, a cloud of uneasiness crept upon Moses and his family. The anger of God was thick in the air, and you could cut the tension with a knife. The Lord met Moses there and confronted him. As if in a nightmare, the Lord sought to put Moses to death. Moses' wife, Zipporah, wasted no time. She rushed to her sons with a flint in her hand and cut off their foreskins. There they were circumcised. For Moses and Zipporah both knew that they had not fully committed to God unless their family also was Hebrew. Zipporah, with her son's bloody foreskins in her hand, threw them at Moses' feet and said, Surely you are a groom of blood to me. And she left him alone. Now the family that was going to set the Hebrews free had fully committed themselves to be Hebrew. And Moses' sons were given to the Lord. Miles away in the alleys of Egypt, God spoke to Aaron, Moses' brother. He said, Go into the wilderness to meet with your brother Moses. Aaron arose and looked towards the mountains beyond the city. There he met with Moses. The two embraced, having not seen each other in over forty years. Moses told Aaron of his mission and how they were both sent by God to free the Israelite people. Aaron, having connections with all the elders, gathered them into one place. Aaron acted as Moses' mouthpiece, just as God had said. 
The people were enamored by his words, captivated by the idea of being set free. All their prayers, all their cries to the Lord had been heard. God had bent his ear to them and seen their affliction. They worshipped God that night and fell on their faces before him. These prayers were the rumblings of true deliverance. After much questioning, doubting, and pleading with God to let him off the hook, Moses finally accepts God's call to return to Egypt and lead the Israelites out of slavery. He's still afraid, but the Almighty God is with him. And throughout this story, we're going to see how God goes before Moses, preparing the way, and how he journeys with Moses, guiding him to the place that he has called him. Moses gathers his family, and they say their goodbyes to Zipporah's father, Jethro. Jethro blesses them and sends them away in peace, knowing that God has called his son-in-law, Moses, for something very special. On the way to Egypt, God tells Moses of his plan to deal with Pharaoh. Moses will show him the signs and wonders that God has given him the power to perform. But God says these will prove ineffective as he will harden the heart of Pharaoh. Pharaoh's unwillingness to release Israel will ultimately cost him dearly. Listen to what God says in Exodus 4, 22 to 24. Then you will say to Pharaoh, Thus says the Lord, Israel is my son, my firstborn. So I said to you, Let my son go that he may serve me. But you have refused to let him go. Behold, I will kill your son, your firstborn. God shows his heart as a father to the nation of Israel and his wrath against those who resist him. He is a father who will stop at nothing to rescue and redeem his beloved children. One day, God will show us just how far he would go, just how loving his great heart, his loving heart is, in that he would send his own son, Jesus, to die so that we could have eternal life. But before he hardens Pharaoh's heart, God must first deal with Moses' own heart. So God confronts Moses with his failure to circumcise his son as a sign of God's covenant with the Hebrew people. And in a truly dramatic, stunning scene, Zipporah performs the operation herself. Zipporah knew that if Moses was to lead the children of Israel out of captivity, his own heart needed to be 100% committed to God and obedient to God. And circumcising his son was a sign of this obedience. When God calls us to himself, he does not accept half-hearted surrender. We must fully commit ourselves to follow the Lord. But then he speaks to Moses' brother Aaron, sending him into the wilderness to meet Moses and to return with him to their people. And together they bring words of great hope to the enslaved Hebrew people. The great I am, the one true God, has heard the cries of his people and have come to rescue them. But the Pharaoh won't let them go easily, and the next time we're going to go with Moses to the very palace of the most powerful man on earth and see what Pharaoh says. Dear God, thank you for always going before us and beside us, and that you live within us through Jesus Christ. Just as you prepared the way through Moses, we can trust that you will prepare the way for us. Lord, search our hearts. And may we always be fully and completely obedient to you. May we surrender quickly to know and to do your will and to always do it with a grateful heart. Thank you for your long-suffering patience with us. In Christ's name, amen. Thank you for listening to today's Bible in a Year podcast. I'm Pastor Jack Graham from Dallas, Texas. Download the Pray.com app and make prayer a priority in your life. If you enjoyed this podcast, share it with someone you know, someone you love, because by sharing this podcast, you can make a big difference in someone's life in Jesus' name. And if you want more resources on how to tap into God's life, God's power, God's strength for successful Christian living, be sure to visit jackgraham.org. God bless you.